Hello everyone. In this case study, we'll be looking at the 1980 Mount St. Helens volcanic eruption. Mount St. Helens is an active stratovolcano located in the state of Washington, in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States. It is approximately 96 miles or 154 kilometers south of Seattle and 50 miles or 8 kilometers northeast of Portland, Oregon. The volcano is located on a destructive plate boundary. This is part of an active subduction zone. The Juan de Fuca plate is being pushed underneath or subducted under the North American plate. As it gets subducted, it melts and the magma rises, being pushed upwards, forming a magma chamber. This then gradually builds underneath the volcano and potentially releases uh, the lava in a large volcanic eruption. The volcano underneath Mount St. Helens is a particularly large and violent type of volcano. And what happened in the 1980 eruption is that it formed a large blister now underneath the volcano and it built leading to a huge violent eruption called a pyroclastic flow where a huge section of the mountain collapsed and exploded outwards very violently damaging everything in its path. The volcano was caused by the magma rising inside the mountain over a period of weeks that created a bulge on the north side of the slope of Mount St. Helens. And then, May the 18th, 1980, at 8.32 in the morning, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake broke the bulge loose causing the north side to dissolve into a massive avalanche or pyroclastic flow. This built up releasing pressure from gases and exploded outwards for about 15 to 19 miles away from the mountain. With the top of the mountain gone, steam and ash rove, rose 12 miles upwards, driven by a chain of explosions from within the mountain's core. The eruption continued for nine hours, releasing millions of tons of ash into the atmosphere. The immediate impacts of the violent volcanic eruption were quite devastating. 57 people died, many of whom were outside the evacuation zones. And it was quite lucky that the eruption occurred on a Sunday, otherwise many more people would have died. 400 meters was blown off the top of the mountain, in addition to this, every plant and animal within 25 kilometers north of the volcano was killed. Approximately 7,000 animals died during the eruption. The water produced from melting ice and snow on top of the volcano created huge mud flows or lahars, which choked rivers, killed fish, and damaged anything that was living inside Spirit Lake. Other impacts also included the destruction of 250 homes, 47 bridges, and 15 miles of railway and 185 miles of highway. Ash clogged car engines, damaged machinery, and caused upwards of 100 million damage. 15 centimeters of ash fell, causing traffic disruptions, damaging power lines, and telephone cables. The long-term impacts were equally devastating. Ash blocked rivers, killing wildlife, and also increasing the chance of them flooding. Subsequent flooding destroyed communications such as railways and bridges. Sediment was also carried downstream and ruined barge transport in the Columbian River. The huge cost of rebuilding infrastructure was particularly impactful on the US economy. It also damaged the tourist industry and stopped tourists visiting the location for many years afterwards. The 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption cost the United States of America millions of dollars. In terms of the response, they needed to repair the bridges and roads that were damaged, they needed to rebuild the homes and houses, people need to be moved back into the areas uh, where they used to live. In addition to that, there could have been also some positive impacts such as increased soil fertility due to the ash deposits. Now the volcano is very carefully monitored 
and tourism has increased, boosting the local economy. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please like. And if you'd like to see more content of this nature, please subscribe to The Geographer online. Also, remember to check out our teaching website as well.